to know more such amazing stories from Indian history, click the bell icon and subscribe to Live History India. When the diminutive man, all of five foot four, stepped off the SS Arabia at Apollo Bandar in Bombay on 9th of January 1915, he was already a bit of a star. In the previous two decades, Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi had shrugged off early struggles with a legal career in England and India to emerge as a civil rights icon in South Africa. His legal work there and the practice of satyagraha and non-violent resistance as a political weapon had led political activists like Gopal Krishna Gokhale to invite Gandhi to return to India. At the time, neither man could have imagined the incredible impact Gandhi's return would have on the making of modern India. Gandhi would go from a young lawyer who saw himself as a failure to a practitioner of such transformative politics that he would come to be acknowledged as the father of a newly independent nation, India. Gandhi was literally everywhere after his arrival. From being mobbed at the talks upon his arrival, he was fated and dined at the mansion of Jahangir Petit, one of Bombay's wealthiest businessmen. After a short visit home to Gujarat, Gandhi embarked upon a Bharat Darshan, extensive travels throughout India. Within a month, he had learned of the death of Gokhale, his mentor, who had urged him to undertake this travel, a journey of learning, of understanding India. It was to be Gandhi's year of probation. And he travelled the length and breadth of India, Ahmedabad, Delhi, Chennai, Kolkata, Shantiniketan, with his greatest anchor, his wife Kasturba, by his side. This experience soon turned into a series of actions, setting a template that would last until independence. In 1916, in a speech at Banaras Hindu University in the presence of the creamy layer of colonial India, Gandhi supported farmers over landlords, questioned the progression of the nationalist movement, criticized revolutionaries, took issue with Indian officials and tore into colonial practices. The speech, which energized and upset people in equal measure, was a sensation. In 1917, Gandhi waded into Champaran in Bihar, a hotbed of resentment against the British-led exploitation of indigo farmers who were compelled to grow the crop at great loss. His non-violent, insistent agitation and investigative reports presented to the government ended the practice of forcing farmers to cultivate indigo, among other reforms. The political practice of ahimsa, non-violence, at the level of the people of India, not the elites of India, had arrived. In 1918, Gandhi left his ashram in Ahmedabad to travel to Kera to the south. A double whammy of floods and famine had left farmers impoverished and unable to pay taxes. Along with volunteers like Vallabhbhai Patel, Gandhi, through non-cooperation with authorities, managed to get the tax collectors and the British to climb down, defer taxes and release agitating farmers. The year 1919 would prove to be a watershed. Gandhi had urged civil disobedience in the wake of the repressive Rowlatt Acts, brutal government pushback and the subsequent massacre at Jallianwala Bagh in April 1919 turned Gandhi into an anti-British battering ram of purpose with non-cooperation and ahimsa. And his support for the Khilafat movement in the same year managed, at least for a while, to stop violence between Hindus and Muslims. That too would be a lesson he carried into the pre-partition years. This five-year period of learning and application in subcontinental politics was hugely influential for the Gandhi of the next few decades. A direct outcome of Gandhi's experience in Champaran and Khera with the trigger of the Jallianwala Bagh massacre led to his leading the non-cooperation movement in 1920. This was an extension of his thesis of Hind Swaraj, the British could rule India on account of Indians cooperating with the British. Non-cooperation could dismantle that machinery 
and lead to concessions and even freedom. Tagged on to the non-cooperation movement was a fresh wave of Swadeshi, reprising the boycott of foreign goods that became the norm during protests against the first partition of Bengal in 1905. This is when Gandhi proposed the wearing of khadi or homespun cloth and even took to spinning thread every day. Even Gandhi's arrest in 1922 couldn't kill this yearning of freedom from Britain. More landmark protests and landmark results would follow. The Salt Satyagraha of 1930. The Roundtable Conferences in London for more political representation. The Quit India Movement of 1942 and its slogan, Do or Die. Much of it began the day a diminutive man, all of five foot four, stepped off the SS Arabia at Apollo Bandar in Bombay on the 9th of January, 1915.